All right, Dave, it's not like this hasn't happened before. End of hour one, I lied. I said we were going to get classy before we got nasty, but that's a load of crap because we're getting nasty right yeah, now, Yeah, I baby. like it. I, I, I like it already. A yeah. bunch of, with a bunch of nasty boys <laughs> in New York City. Yes, we Bust are. it open, baby. You got to get a little bit crazy. I'm telling you. I love Knobs. He doesn't even let me introduce him. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Multi-time world, cha- world tag team champion with, of course, Jerry Sags. It's nasty boy, Brian Knobs, who... Not only will be at the Legends of Wrestling at City Field uh, this coming Sunday, just a couple of days from now, 3 to 7 p.m. at the big old ballpark. If you're a Mets fan, um, if you're a wrestling fan, if you're any kind of fan, it's going to be a great event. Lots of legends that are going to be out there and some great wrestling as well. But you're a huge part to this event. I mean, it seems like you're like a jack of all trades when it comes to setting up this event, Brian. Well, you know, it started back, uh, like I was telling you this before earlier, uh, I did the... you know, been living down in Tampa, Florida now since uh, 1988, and uh, when the new regime came in and uh, we came became the Tampa Bay Rays instead of Devil Rays, we were still the Devil Rays for a little bit. But they asked if I would be the tenth man on the team and help us promote when the Yankees played us or the Red Sox. It was always filled with Red Sox and Yankee fans. So I said, "Why not?" You know, I said, "You know, what what do I get?" You know, <laughs> so I, I thought maybe there was money behind it, but they said, "No, you get them nice cushioned seats right behind home." plate and I said okay was well, that all he said no <laughs> you also get free uh food and beer and I said Done. free food and beer I'm <laughs> in hey where do I sign that's the greatest contract I ever signed in my life that's awesome and then uh, after about two years they asked me to do a legends of wrestling night and we started with uh uh Bret Hart and a bunch of the guys and it went over well and we did about three matches after the baseball game. Then it did so well they did it the night the year after and then the second year the one of the VPs came up to me and said, You should try to, you know, go out to a bunch of the major league teams and do this sure. and that's what we did and we've been building it and so forth. We're coming to City Field, nice. June seventh, you nice. know, and we're also doing uh, July thirty first with the Florida Marlins, and uh, we're talking with the Colorado Rockies and a bunch of other teams. But we usually do it with baseball, you know. But uh, they wanted to have it on their own and have it like a wrestle fest. And I said, hey, if you want to do it, I'm willing to do it. I mean, there ain't no better city than New York City to do it. And first of all, there's a lot of history. I still, I'm old school because I'm from PA. To me, it's still Shea, Shea Stadium. Stadium. Been the last match there yep. was 1980, the last big match wrestling match there, and now we're gonna start a you know a new wrestling thing there at City Field, and uh, you know it's gonna be a one heck of an event. I mean, when you're bringing in guys like Bill Goldberg, Bret the Hitman Hart. Rick Flair, I mean, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, Demolition. I mean, the list goes on and on. RVD, Amy Dumas, a.k.a. Lita. Yeah. I mean, you know. You a lot got of Hall th- of Famers in that mix there. A lot of Hall of Famers, plus you got guys from TNA. Uh, Mr. Anderson's coming in here. The, the Aces of Eights are getting back together. Wes Briscoe, Gallo, uh, uh, Mike Knox, who was used to be with the WWE. and. Sure. Guys, that Knox. The, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the young guys and the old guys, and mix them up together, and uh, you know, and I'm wrestling again. Oh, you know, I'm Love kind, it. kind of thinking I'm semi-retired. I mean, every morning I wake up, it's like someone drove over my body with a tractor trailer. That's how <laughs> I feel. But uh, we're doing it, and we're doing it upright. We're gonna have a New York City street fight at City Field against uh, Knox and Anderson. So they better get ready. I'm telling you because when me and Sag, uh, you know, put our gear back on, uh, it's for real. Uh, you know, you're, somebody's you're going, getting an armpit there. Yeah, <laughs> armpit, and you're walking down Nasty Boulevard to get nasty size, baby. <laughs> Do you get jived up for it? Like when you're in the ring, you get you know, listen. You're you're promoting it, and thank you for coming up here. But once you're in the ring, uh, is it like just you go all out? You know, I, I yes, you, you just go absolutely crazy, but I got to tell you, you know, I do go do a lot of these comic cons and do a lot of autograph sessions, and I got to, you got to, when you get to my age now, and I'm I'm not going to lie, I'm 52, I've been in this business 27 years, and when you get people coming to you up off the streets and telling, thanking you for what you did, you know you did something right, and you know what? It is all about the fans. Without the fans, the Nasty Boys wouldn't be the Nasty Boys. Ric Flair wouldn't be Ric Flair. I mean, even Hulk Hogan wouldn't be Hulk Hogan. you got to appreciate the fans, no doubt. and that's what this Legends of Wrestling kind of does. It's an appreciation to the fans.
fans for, you know, looking and cheering us on all these years. Now we got a chance to, you know, meet and greets and sign autographs and also wrestle and, and like almost kind of old school wrestling, but not, th- not that old school because the Nasty Boys were never really that old school, you know? Yeah, you guys kind of had a style unto yourselves, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, we were hardcore before hardcore was cool. This is true. Um, <laughs> who's the guy or gal that you're most excited to see when you get there? Maybe you haven't seen that person for a while. You get to kick back, reminisce, tell some stories. Who's that person? Well, there's a cut. You know, actually, there's about six or seven of them on there. You know, right away, Brett the Hitman Hart who's been a friend of mine forever. I mean, me and Sally actually stayed at Stu's place, and God bless his soul, Davey Boy, we were driving with him when we wrestled up in Canada when we wrestled for the WWF at the time, wow. and he just dropped us off at Stu's house and put us in the Anvil and Ellie's old room, and there were cats everywhere, and one cat was almost as big as a tiger, and Sag freaked out, <laughs> and we left the house, and we had to go We had to go find ourselves a hotel. We couldn't stand it, because he, Davy Boy brought us in the middle of the night, and Stu's house was like an old mansion, like the Adams family, you know what I mean? Spooky. Oh, uh, yeah, and it, but it was great, so seeing Brett, and then also... Woo, Mr. Yeah. Flair, you know, I mean, we've been down, up and down the highway so many years, and it's always good to see Rick, and he's always a good time, and Goldberg, yeah. I mean, come on, you know, the name speaks for itself, and he's been a true, really good friend of mine. When he was actually breaking in and started to streak and all that, you know, we would drive together, me, him, and uh, Ricky Steiner, and we, you know, became really good friends, and it still holds to, you know, this day, so I can't wait to, you know, get get up. Well, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, another one. We rode up and down the oh. highway. So, yeah. I was going to say, a lot of that WCW <laughs> blood, and then he throws Duggan in there. <laughs> well, you know, can I tell you, it's like bringing all your you know rowdy friends together again and Seriously. you know you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen i'm you, telling you start you. with flair yeah on that well, one. It, it's funny because i'm going to be there on sunday it's supposed first of all it's supposed to be beautiful on sunday it's supposed to be in the 70s and sunny so you're going to have an awesome day nice. but i'm taking my daughter with me because quite honestly she knows everybody on this list she knows flair she knows steiner she knows doug and like it's funny how the young kids know all these superstars from the 80s and 90s. And that's I get that a lot. And I was just at the Chiller Theater uh, not too long ago in April. And I got that a lot from the you know younger generation sure. knowing, you know, watching what we did back in the day. And it was just a different time. And their dads made sure that like your daughter watched it. And, and it's great. And what we're bringing to the Legends of Wrestling is a fan-friendly you know, kid environment, so you can go out there and have a good time. You don't have to worry about it getting raunchy nice. or anything like that. But you're going to have some fun, and it's going to be just like old times again, just like we were down the street here at Madison Square Garden doing it up. City Field coming up on Sunday, three to seven p.m. Lots of great wrestling, as uh, as Nobs mentioned. I mean, just a ton of stars for you to meet and greet, and a lot of them that you'll be able to watch, including Nobs and Sags in the squared circle. That's pretty awesome. Tell us the influence of our good buddy, but certainly not as good as you as as a buddy, is Jimmy Hart. I mean, that guy, we've talked to him so many times. I mean, he's hilarious. One of my favorite pictures, I actually got the megaphone. And, you know, I, I, I recall him telling stories upon stories and always, you know, sometimes, you know, many times circling back to you guys. Talk about Jimmy as a manager. Jimmy Hart is, we had a couple managers along our trip in uh, pro wrestling, but Jimmy Hart was our, like, actual real manager because he helped us out. It was when we first got to the W. WWF, WWE, but WWF back in the day, and uh, he actually drove with us uh, for the first 10 days. We were in a car together, we roomed together, and we had a great time, and he showed us the ropes, and then after that road trip, and we all landed back in Tampa, he goes, okay, now, I show you the ropes. From now on, you guys can get your own car and room together, <laughs> but this is what you still need to be at the building at this time and this time, but still... I just talked to him yesterday. Uh, he's still a very close, great friend of mine, and he's one of the greatest managers that I think throughout the history of managers, you got a lot of them, from Captain Lou to Freddie Classy, Freddie Blassie to Mr. Fuji, but Jimmy Hart ranks right up there with the best of them. Bobby the Brain Heenan, yes. another one, you know? I think that's what, uh, in 
today's wrestling, I think it misses some of that. It misses the tag team situation. Oh my God. It miss- misses the different uh, managers because there used to be tons of managers and tons of different tag teams that were tag teams that weren't just people put together. And, you know, I wish I would see a little bit more of that these days, you know? Well, I think a, a younger fan that just watches the WWE now would probably not even believe that, hey, for a lot of years, the tag teams were the main event. You know, yes, uh, we t- were. teams like you, teams like the Road Warriors, where they're in the main event. We sold out Madison Square Garden against the Road Warriors, and I'll tell you, if you want to know about getting your ass whooped, uh, <laughs> go against God Bless Hawk, and but Adam and Hawk were two tough SOBs, and I got to put the Steiners right in there because if they got a hold of you, you didn't know which way you were going to go, and you were going. And when we first got the WCW, nobody wanted to wrestle the Steiners, and we just got there. We've been wrestling in the business about four or five years, and they said, would you like to wrestle the Steiners? We want to put you in the program with the Steiners. And me and Sager, barroom brawlers from PA, we said, hell yeah, put us in there. And you know what? Had the greatest matches with them. Never got hurt of once, and we're still real good friends with them to this day. And but the matches were brutal. They were honestly, there was no fake about them matches. We were hitting each other and hammering each other, but we didn't care. Just like uh, we had really good matches with uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty back in the day, because they go all the way back to the AWA days sure. back in '86 when they him and Marty were together, and they were like innovators at the time because they were doing stuff the tag teams never did before with the leapfrogging and the dropping down and the double arm drags. The and, yeah, you know, so it was great. I mean, we went against everybody, even the British Bulldogs. I mean, you just named some of the teams. I mean, from the Hart Foundation. I mean, there's power and glory. I mean, there were so many. And I put even put, I was so glad they got inducted this year, the Bushwhackers. Sure. Hey, but make it be the Bushwhackers or not, but they were entertaining. And when you went out there, people liked them, and you know they hated us at the time. So you know it was a good feeling. I, I like being the bad guy. Well, funny that the Bushwhackers go in because the Nasty Boys have been up for a lot of talk in terms of Hall of Fame, and I, I assume that would be quite an honor for you and Jerry. I mean, that, your that thoughts would, on Hall of Fame? That would finalize our career yeah. as total. If that, that would be such a great, great honor if me and me and Sag ever got into the WWE Hall of Fame, because I'll tell you that that would that would just you know. First of all, from uh, WrestleMania 7 and us winning the belts against the Hart Foundation, that actually uh, labeled us as legit after we beat you know the Hart Foundation at WrestleMania 7. And if you look back at it, I look back at it like it's, as pro football and, you know, Dick Buckus, Ray Nitschke, you know, all these guys. And because... Then we're the early Super Bowl, Super Bowl one, two, three, four, five. Well, we were in WrestleMania seven, WrestleMania eight, and now they're up to WrestleMania thirty two. So it's like we helped build that foundation, and we were on the road a lot back in the days, three hundred days a year, and uh, you know. Back in the day, there were no trainers in the locker room, and if you didn't wrestle, you didn't get paid. So, you know, uh, you were on the road a lot, but you were getting paid good, and you loved what you did, and I would never regret it. I mean, my body feels like it does today, but, hell, I had a good time doing it. And, again, it was the fans that kept you going. I mean, it was, you know... You you saw people and flashing the pans that came in and came out and this and that, but for some reason uh, the fans still stuck behind the Nasty Boys uh, for years. And like I say, to this day we go places, and even when I walk down the street, you know, someone come up to me and thank me for you know the years of what, what we did, you know. And we were more like a barroom style, barroom fighting kind of people, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's funny. You and I actually have something in common. What's we that? both we both have bad reputations. Now my <laughs> bad reputation is a hundred percent truth because that's the type of human being I am. Now, how much of your reputation is just a lot of wrestling myth, or how much of it is true? Because there's a lot of stories oh, surrounding yeah. the nasty boys. Well, say I had uh, a scholarship to one of the colleges, and he had to go to. Uh, uh, to uh, junior college first, and he hit the hall monitor overhead with a keg of beer and got kicked out. <laughs> and I was in the uh, uh, United States Army and got kicked out, but I, it wasn't dishonorable. It was honorable, and I don't want to really get in why I got kicked out, but then we went back home and we were getting in a lot of fights, and our good friend, football player for Super Bowl rings, Matt Millen, wow. uh, called Matt us Millen. aside and told us, hey, you guys, uh, you're going down the wrong path, and if you don't uh, straighten up, you guys are going to you know, wind up in jail one day. And, you know, he said, Nobs, why don't you uh, 
So you and him, Sags, try that wrestling out you always like, you know, because I used to go down back in the day when they used to have it at Hamburg and film in Hamburg and film it in Philly. And then uh, also in Allentown, they filmed it. Yeah. And uh, so we said, you know what? That ain't a bad idea. So we bugged the hell out of George the Animal Steel. And so much so after one match, we drove around his car and he was in the <laughs> car with somebody. He called us the next day to come down and he had... Jimmy Schnooker, Bob Orton Jr., and I forget who the other wrestler was, and they were going to stretch us. They were going to really give it to us. But me and Sag were working, so I called him. I said, Mr. Steele, I, I, we can't make it. I'm so sorry. I would have loved to make it. I found out later that he had this you know, plan us to get our asses whooped, but uh, he told us if we're really serious about it, You'll go to Vern Gagne School in Minnesota, and that'll either make you or break you. Wow. And was he not kidding? We got killed. We were twenty. started with 22 students. Me and Sags were the only ones to survive. That's because our car broke down. We lived on the bottom of Brad, Brad Reagans, who was an Olympic champion, bronze medal winner, and he was uh, Vern Gagne's you know, teacher for pro wrestling. And the ring didn't come out for three months. We were on Olympic mats. I was going, I didn't sign up for this. And <laughs> getting stretched, or, you know. Oh. And then after you couldn't lift the muscle because wow. he put you through the Olympic training style, there came Vern Gagne. Poor Vern. God bless him. He just passed yes. away not too long ago. And he would you know, take off his tie. And you, your grandmother could beat you and put you in these shooter holes that could break your arm or twist your neck. And you're screaming, no more, please. Just like... Uh, Stu Hart used to do, I mean, and, you know, some of the other, uh, Eddie Graham down in Florida, they had, you know, it was more about respect. If you can get through it, then we're going to beat the heck out of these guys, and if they get through that, we become wrestlers, you become ring truck drivers, <laughs> <laughs> then you referee, and then maybe possibly you start wrestling, you know? You know, it's wow. funny. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Vern Gagne because a lot of people say that the AWA and a big reason why they folded is because Vern Gagne was kind of behind the times. But you mentioned, you know, the Midnight Rockers started in the AWA. Yeah. So there was a lot of infusion Mr. of Perfect. that new town. Yes. Yeah, a lot, a, lot, a lot of people. He had a, you know, it just was uh, uh, what happens, everything. There's change in everything. Just like now, uh, someone asked me the other day about wrestling. What do you think of it? And I said, well, it's like everything else football. That's change. You can't hit the quarterback like you used to. Baseball, they have their changes. Basketball, I mean, everything, you got to change with the times, and that's what it's all about. And I think the guys today are doing a terrific job. I know a bunch of them, like Seen is a friend of mine. I know uh, uh, Orton Jr., I mean, uh, uh, Randy, Randy, uh, Randy, sure. Ra Randy, and I know uh, uh, Seamus is a good friend. She Seamus, before he got... Uh, you know, to the before he was even in Nexus and all that, was training with me and Sags. When we, me and Sags, almost had like a little comeback. We were going to try it again, and we were actually down there training at their developmental school in Tampa back in 2008. And we had a good match and went out there, and you know, never could work out a deal. But you know, there there ain't no place like you know the WWE. Sure. I mean, when I was in AWA and we were on ESPN, my pop used to say. Nobody when I call him, Dad, I'm on ESPN, you'll watch it, you know, this night. He, he would always say to me, You're not in the WWF yet, kid. You're not in the WWF. Oh, geez. And then when we finally made hey, it Dad, and, come on, man. Well when we finally made it and that we won the belts and before that, you know, it's like everybody knows it's entertainment, this and that. So I knew a little bit more than my dad did, so I called him and he gave me a big pep talk. And at the end of the match, when we won it, me and Sag are laying on top of Jimmy. After we just won it on the floor, and I'm yelling, Dad, Dad, and it sounded like Dad, 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 and he was at home, my mom said, watching, and he had tears running down wow. his eyes, and to this day, I know he's not listening right now, I was really saying, yeah, 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 not Dad, <laughs> Dad, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's still that's a, still an awesome moment. You know, it, it seems like wrestling is taking a step for the better. You know, we, we've been on the air for over six years, and we have gone through the ebbs and flows of pro wrestling. And I think a piece of that, and it also it's got to be a cool piece for you because you can watch yourself now all the time yep. on the WWE Network. That's so awesome. It, it does seem like wrestling is evolving, and now independence, uh, TNA, Ring of Honor. Uh, there's these different lucha products and yes. you know there's there's so much selection now wrestling is totally on the uptick it's it's finally turning a little bit and that's the one thing i was going to say because back in our day 
you know, and you're just talking the 80s and the 90s, there were more than 12 or 13 places you could go to wrestle and make a living. And not just independent people that just put on a show here or put on a show there and think they're a promoter or an actual you know, promotion like an AWA or, you know, you had Florida Championship Wrestling, you had Mid-South, you had uh, uh, the Georgia Championship Wrestling, you had, you know, Kansas City. I mean, there was all with Harley Race, you yeah. had, you know, the Oregon had one. Now that's finally, not little territories, but there's finally, you know, people coming and getting their act together. Like you said, with the promotions, where there's places for the guys to wrestle. Because if there is no place for the guys to wrestle, you got to hone your craft somewhere. And it's hard to hone your craft if you're wrestling in a bar room, you know, once a month or, you know, once every two weeks or whatever. Because, you know, at least when you're in a promotion that has other guys that's been there and knows how to wrestle, you're learning something. You know what I mean? And that's what you got to do. The more times you wrestle, the better you get. Like in anything. Like in you guys doing this job. I mean, you're on a congratulations. Six years, man. That's, Thank you. You know, and you get you just get find out, oh, maybe I shouldn't have did that or maybe I shouldn't have did this. And You, you, you need you, your reps. And yes, exactly. And you just keep getting better. And and it's 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 finally on the ups. It took a while, but it's finally, you know, it's finally getting there. And sometimes it just takes one guy like let's 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 face facts. WWF when it went national, big key reason why is Hulk Hogan. Yeah, Hulk Hogan was a big reason why they were able to do that national push. And I know you have a great relationship with Hogan. He's back in the mix yes. in the WWE as well. But he's, he's back those, where he belongs. Yes, tell you the yes. Truth. And I think there was no WrestleMania without Hogan. Right. Mania. No, and 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 but I gotta say one thing. It was him and Vince McMahon. Oh, they yes. both were together when they went nationwide. It was them two. Collaborated together, and Hulk told me many of stories. But yeah, there is no one like Hulk. Uh, there, there, you got The Rock, you got Stone Cold, all really good friends of mine. Especially Stone Cold is. But I think there'll be only one Hulk Hogan. There will never be a never. Hulk, there'll, there'll be the Rocks and the Stone Colds that are huge superstars. But still, when Hulk walks down that street or walks anywhere or goes anywhere, everybody. I mean, all over the world. Knows that yellow bandana, that yellow hair yep. sticking out the back, and it's it just it's just what it is. You know what I mean? Because he did change it. He changed he changed uh, the face of wrestling and made it you know worldwide. Actually, yep. So, what is preparation like for this match coming up at City Field? Well, a lot of cardio for you. Uh, Are you really getting you know, in the gym? Your cardio. Um, you know the gym right now. I try to go. When I can, because my body's busted up, I can't do what I used to. So you got to try to go light weight, because from your elbows to your shoulders and different injuries, you know, you can only do so much. But the cardio is the biggest thing, you know. Try to get that going. But when you're in a street fight match and the adrenaline's pumping, it's like I'm at, the, you know. Uh, Styles Cafe bar on a Friday night, and someone mouthed off to me and Sags, and there goes the you know, bar stool. Wow, there goes a glass, there goes a bottle. Watch out, here we go. You know, and sometimes there's no training for that. Dave, just tell Abigail to duck on Sunday. Well, okay? I'm, wonder- I'm wondering on Sunday now, if I go up to Brian on Sunday and I'm like, hey, Brian, man, th- thanks for coming in on Friday. It was great to see you. Is he going to be like, hey, LaGreca, how are you? Is he going to be like, who the hell are you? Get out of my way. I got autographs to sign. So I'm wondering what Brian I'm going to get on Sunday. Well, you know what? You'll get the same guy you got here until it's Almost ring time. Okay, so it's, so it's like yeah, 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 you, get, you, get, like you got it. that. You, you got that. You know that focus time to get focused. And usually, I won't be out signing autographs. I'll be in the locker room, getting ready, doing what I have to do, and uh, you know, to get ready to kick some ass. And the nasty boys will be kicking some ass. And somebody's going to Pity City. It's a sticky, <laughs> nasty situation. But I'm telling you, one of them fools are going to. Uh, you know. Gonna smell Sags' armpit or my armpit, and we have. I'm not gonna shower until the, after Sunday. Oh, oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Well, and thanks I didn't for even shower. I didn't even shower today. Oh really? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're sitting closer to Dave. Yeah, right? well, that's why I'm a nasty boy. What can I say? <laughs> it's, it's, it's rare. I shower, so yeah, I'm, we're this in good is company. true. We're good company. It's another thing in common between <laughs> you and Brian. That's awesome, Brian Nobbs, one half of the Nasty Boys. Listen. 
best of luck. City Field Thank coming you. up on Sunday, 3 to 7 p.m. The autographs, the legends, and, of course, the great wrestling. Thank you so much for coming in. It's great meeting you, and hope to see you very soon again. What do you, what do you think? You think I brought up a good idea? Now I got a bunch of guys behind me with this Legends of Wrestling going to and, and adding, bringing it in with baseball. And also, we, we're talking with like NFL and NHL to bring it in to have meet and greets and just to the wrestlers that yeah. everybody, you know, you don't always get a chance to see Bill yep. Goldberg. You don't even, you know, I mean, the, and actually sit down, have a meet and greet and talk and autographs and stuff like that. I think you, I think you definitely hit the nail on the head. And I love it being at Major League Stadiums. Yes. I think that's, that's just another piece of, of it where it's like, oh my God, we're on the field at this big old ballpark. This is amazing. Yeah. And it's love city it. field. I'm still used to calling it Shea, but there was so much history there. From wrestling all the way back to Andre the Giant and Chuck Webner, you know what I mean? So it's good that we're starting something new at City Field. And I, I tell everybody, come out. Don't miss it. It's going to be a great time. And we're going to have a lot of fun. And we damn sure are going to get nasty. What can I, <laughs> I say? It. Hey, listen, I think Doug would agree to this. It doesn't matter if it's City Field or it's Shea Stadium. It's where the other New York baseball team plays. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely. I That's... see you're a Yankees fan right there. There we yes, go. Yes, sir. See? Thank you, Nobs. I'm a Rays fan. He's getting pity city before I leave. Just for <laughs> yes! that state. That's a stinky, nasty situation, brother. (laughs) Brian, thank you so much. Hey, guys, thanks for having me, and I'll see everybody out there June 7th. This Sunday, baby, we're coming. The Nasty Boys are in town. Watch out. New York City's on fire.